How's it going guys? Angus here from Maker's Muse. So about a week ago I put a video up about this. So this is a giant Maker's Muse maker coin, like I've got <laughs> buckets of them at the moment. But um, this is a big one done with a, a 3D infill, which is a lattice structure I designed within Mesh Mixer. And I alluded in that video that I'm going to be challenging someone with a much larger print volume to make one of these, but much bigger. Well, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I created it, and we'll see if he's up to the task. Let's get started. All right, guys, so here we have it. So this is, as you probably guessed it, a 3D printing nerd coin. So I knocked this up in Onshape. Uh, getting the text was a little bit interesting because Joel doesn't really have a logo as such, it's a text logo. And a few design choices, the D would obviously fall away when you print it. So if you look at the back here, I've got these little joiners which will keep those pieces of the letters in place. A little bit more angular than mine, just a few choices. I don't know. I just went and had some fun with it. But what we're going to be doing in this video is using Mesh Mixer to do the lattice, 3D lattice infill of this. And we're going to be making it really large so we can stick it on his GMAX and we can see how it goes. Because I'm pretty curious to see how this concept goes on a larger printer. So first things first is scale. We want to make sure it's a good scale. So I'm not sure how big he's going to want to go with it, but I'm just going to make this 300. Right, so that's that large. Bigger or smaller, you can scale it as you like, Joel. That's cool. So, if you are not familiar with my method for making this, it's using inverted normals. So I did a video here on inverting normals. Definitely check it out if you're interested. But we're going to be using that technique now to make the 3D lattice infill. So, let's go to edit. And to create our infill, we need an offset space. So you can do this either using the meshes and offsetting the meshes, or as I like to do it here, using the hollow tool. So hollow in Mesh Mixer is very powerful if you're going to be printing for SLS, for example, where you want a hollow shape. But we're going to be using this to create that offset, which we're going to then turn into a 3D lattice. Okay, so I've just dropped a transparent uh, texture onto this so I can see how the hollow is going. So W turn, turns the wireframe on and off. You can see it's offset into the shape by two millimeters. That looks okay, to be honest. I mean, I might make it 1.5. Not too fast here. Solid accuracy, yeah, not too bad. Mesh density, a little bit higher. We don't want any holes. Update. The hollow tool is quite powerful in Mesh Mixer because it's a remesh of the inside area and offset. It's not just an offset of the triangles. Because if you just offset triangles of a mesh, you can often get collisions and weird intersecting errors and things like that. Whereas the hollow tool will actually create a whole remeshed area within that shape. So it's an approximation of that outside mesh. It's not going to be perfect. As you can see, there's quite a few sort of uh, little artifacts, but that doesn't really matter if you're just hollowing something out. It's quite powerful. Sweet. So there we go. It's offset by 1.5 millimeters. And yeah, this actually is a much more complicated coin than my one because, you know, mine just has the, the two sort of shapes there, whereas this one has a lot of text, but you can see it's done a pretty good job. So let's select accept. And there's a hollow. So I'll just turn the, uh, put, put a texture back on. The reason we did that hollow is to then turn that into the, the 3D lattice structure inside, but we want the outside shape to be untouched. So we're going to go do separate shells. And by doing that, we now have the hollow separated out. So if I hide the original, so that's, that's, uh, whoa, that is bonkers. Oh, I probably want say shader. Shader? There we go. <laughs> so what we have here are the offset remesh triangles, which would make this shape otherwise hollow. And you can see it's got that zebra stripe pattern, which indicates this is the reverse of the triangles. But what we're going to do to use this to make our lattice is we need to flip those triangles to work with them. So let's go to select and then just control A, selects everything and flip normals. There we go. So now we can start working on that shape. And this is where the fun part comes in. So go to edit and we want to make pattern. This is where you just can completely manipulate this shape as much as you like. I am going to choose lattice. So as far as I understand, all the other shapes will work, but I don't know if they'll be structurally stable enough for FDM 3D printing. But by all means, experiment. And if you have a powder-based system like an SLS, just stick an exit hole and you can do any shape you want, really. And that's something I am going to be doing in the future. But for now, we want lattice. Let's make the element dimensions 6 and the spacing maybe 25. Nope, 25. 
something like that. And to make this actually useful for supporting the print, we want to turn it by on 45 degrees on both axes. So 45 there. Uh, let's go to a world unit. And then 45 again. So we've got these these lattice structures that are sort of intersecting and going out, but they're all 45 degrees, which means they should all be 3D printable without support material. And that's the key here. You want the shape to be completely hollow with this crazy 3D infill, which is what we're going to get. So I'm pretty happy with that. We want to intersect, no, subtract, sorry. We want to subtract this. So if we go to update, it's going to look a, bit, a little bit weird and that's okay, which leads us with this crazy looking thing. So this is, I mean, it'd be cool to print this just by itself. It looks like cheese, 3D printing nerd cheese coin. <laughs> Very strange. Um, but we're actually going to then invert this again. So we're going to flip the normals again. So this becomes a cavity within our overall shape. And that's what's going to form this internal letter structure again. So again, select control A and edit flip normals. And we'll get our original, which would be this one here and select our, our internal cavity thing and combine. Don't have to do a boolean difference, boolean union, nothing like that. We're just combining them. And this is what we're left with. So it looks, looks normal, right? Well, not quite. Let's go to the uh, transparent. Let's go to a transparent texture. And it's got all of this crazy stuff going on inside. Absolutely nuts. So this is what's inside. We've got this crazy lattice, which will support the part as it's being printed and support the top fill surface. And we've got a very nice clean outside area supporting our shapes. So, I mean, you could even print this like this and it would just look absolutely insane. Uh, or you could print it solid with a clear plastic. So I, do, I did this one with a translucent red. You could do a complete clear PLA and stick a light behind it so it sort of glows and looks crazy. I don't know, but I'm really keen to see how this turns out. Oh, you might not be able to do it with this uh, this specific cut because it's very thin there. But maybe with a cut a little bit higher. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. I'm going to shoot this through to Joel. And, I mean, when he has time and he's very busy scheduled because he's more busy than me, uh, I'd love to see how you go with this 3D print. And don't forget, guys, I'm doing a video every day this month as part of uh, the Vader vlog every day in August. And you can, if you don't know what that is, click the link in the description. And I'll see you tomorrow for our regular Sunday live stream. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Here's the latter half of the 20th century. And man has sent rockets into deep space. He has placed satellites into orbit. He has actually walked in space.